it's Becky and today I'm going to be doing a book haul for you. Um, I very recently, like two weeks ago, moved into this new flat and I decided to treat myself to some books because one, I hadn't bought any in so long because I didn't want to have to pack even more books than I already had. Two, I had some problems with uh, some furniture not being delivered so I decided to treat myself uh, with a bit of a shopping spree um, with the money that I wasn't then spending on furniture. So first up, I just want to preface kind of all the books that I bought. I bought them because, well, I basically bought the entire long list for the Women's Prize here in the UK. Um, this was to kind of pull me out of my safety zone with books. I read a lot of fantasy, I read a lot of YA fantasy, and I read some sci-fi. And I will pretty much pick up any genre if, if it's in front of me and I'll read it. However, my kind of what I'm buying and what I'm picking up is more often than not kind of very safely in that YA fantasy or fantasy genre. So I looked at the long list and I was like, this is a wide range of books than what I'd normally read and I probably wouldn't have picked them up otherwise unless they were bought for me by someone else. So yeah, that's why I picked these ones up. And just to kind of preface it, I don't know about every single one of these books. I definitely looked at the list and went, Okay, I'll buy them as a treat for myself. So do you kind of bear with me if I if I need to go away and read up on the blurb or something like that. The first book that's come in the box is uh, Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, um, but I believe it's kind of a Greek myth, a Greek retelling. So after reading the blurb, I'm not sure if it is a Greek retelling or not. I'd have to read up more about it. But um, it is blurred by Madeline Miller, which is probably why I've assumed that is the case. It's written by Susanna Clark, who's previously written uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I haven't read, but I've heard good things about. And I'm quite intrigued by the concept. Basically, uh, Piranesi, or Piranesi, or however that's pronounced, lives alone in this house and may have always lived there. Um, it's kind of uh, fantasy orientated. And he often walks around the house and he meets his friend the other, which is some kind of creature, or he brings kind of food and gifts to the dead, but most of the time he's alone in this house, and then there's, uh, it starts having kind of chalk uh, writing on the walls and doors and things like that, which he needs to find out like who is in the house with him as he's no longer alone. And the next book I got was Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. This is a much more contemporary read, and it's about a journalist who's been contacted about um, kind of a virgin birth of this person's daughter, I think it is. I'll claim that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth, sorry. Um, basically they're figuring out uh, whether this story is true and what, what it means, but also her life is becoming completely entwined with the woman who's contacted her and they're kind of weighing up whether the chance of happiness with these people who she's met is more important than um, integrity of being a journalist and finding out the truth. I believe that's kind of the overall concept. I don't know if I'm completely correct on everything, but again, it's not something I would have normally picked up. Um, I'm not big into contemporaries, but it's really interesting. And I think I've read a similar book about kind of virgin birth miracle a few years back, which was written very fantasy orientated and it was left really open and I didn't like it so I really hope this doesn't go that way. Now the next book is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Yes, Britt Bennett. The Vanishing Half is about a set of twins who when they were growing up they were completely inseparable but now they've kind of grown up and gone their separate ways. Um, basically the twins are black but they're white passing and so one of them lives uh, in a black community with her black daughter and the other one who has kind of took on that white passing and lives with her white husband and their family doesn't really connect with her black the black culture that she's grown up with um, and basically what i think happens is both their daughters end up meeting each other and their lives become entwined and then the two twins kind of meet up and have to kind of reform uh, whatever relationship they once had or maybe it goes completely wrong I'm not sure I've not read it yet but it's really interesting it's meant to talk about kind of relationships and family ties and between twins and sisters um, but it's also got a lot about race and gender in there as well okay the next book I've got is Burnt Sugar by Agni Doshi and um, this is very similar to The Vanishing Half in that it focuses a lot on uh, family relationships However, this is between a mother and daughter, 
the mother when they were younger um, wasn't a very good mother in the eyes of the daughter often following around kind of um, I think it was a homeless artist yeah homeless artist had a brief stint as a beggar um, abandoned her marriage um, for all of this and kind of took their kids around in tow um, and then the daughter who'd grown up with this mother has kind of had to now take on the caregiver role as she's started to I'm assuming doesn't say exactly in the book but I'm assuming from some kind of dementia um, and she's now taking care of her and it's kind of flipped her head and she's now taking care of a woman who she doesn't feel a lot of positive emotions towards and explores that. Um, again this isn't something I would have normally picked up um, and even like looking at the book itself I probably wouldn't have picked it up if I saw it in a bookstore. Um, it doesn't look like the kind of book that I would have picked up even from a contemporary sense. It looks a little bit like it's going to be a poetry book which it's not <laughs> but I'm quite excited to read it still um, and I'm hoping it's good. And next up is Lester by Raven uh, Leilani. This is about a book, um, this book follows kind of completely different fa family dynamic again. It's about um, our main character who's kind of failed at her life so far in her eyes. Um, she works in kind of a dead end job, she's given up what she loves which is painting and then she meets a man um, who's in an open marriage and who has a black adopted daughter. Um, she kind of runs her first into this life, into this family, um, and acts kind of like a second mother, I think, to this adopted daughter. And I'm assuming there's lots of tension between her and the wife, as well as probably the husband and the child as well, who's because she's kind of jumping into their family. I've heard a lot of good things about this book before. Um, I've actually seen it on a lot of kind of must-read lists, so I'm really excited to Read it. Uh, next up is Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon and this is a book about relationships again. It's about a husband who after 20 years of marriage has lost his wife and in kind of the grieving process he realises that one he relearns his love for her but also realises that she may not have loved him the way that he thought and kind of that grief comes anew as well. Um, again like this is not something I would have picked up. Um, I normally shy away for anything like kind of married couples just because it's really not something I can relate to right now. However I'm interested to read this and read it and compare it to the other books on the long list. Just about the kind of writing quality, the writing style to see kind of the differences in it um, and also the in-depth relationship analysis because we're going to be seeing the story from mostly I think one side from the husband figuring out what his wife thought of him uh, which I think is a really unique take on it but again it's not the genre I normally read so if it's not unique please just maybe don't rip into me too much and then the last book in this box which I put over there is Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller and I'll be honest, I was definitely into this book from the cover and I have no idea what it's about, so let's read the blurb. Very similar to The Vanished Half, I think it's called. Yeah, The Vanished Half. This is about a story of twins, uh, but rather than separating, these twins have lived together their entire lives. They're in their 50s now and they still live with their mother. Um, they live in kind of poverty. A lot of the things they do every day is to survive, they grow things in their garden, um, they paint um, and they're very, you know, isolated where they are. Uh, when their mother dies they kind of have threats, I'm assuming, um, against the house and where they live and they have to come to terms with figuring that out. Very similar to the last book, Nothing But, Sky, um, Nothing but Blue Sky, I don't actually know what's going to go on in this book from the blurb but I'm really intrigued to see kind of the relationship aspect similar to the last one and also judge it compared to the rest of the long list and see if it's a book that's going to keep in my mind for years to come or not. So next up is No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. This is a book about a woman who's kind of like a social media viral star and their life is very focused on that until their mother kind of Text them and says, I need you to be here right now, there's an emergency. 
um, where kind of the life online or what she's kind of called the portal mixes with real life and kind of puts a lot of tension on her. The blurb doesn't really tell you what's happened or anything like that so I'm really intrigued to find out what that is but like I said like it's a really thin book. I could probably read this in a day if I tried. It's about 200 pages, quite big text. So yeah, I'm probably gonna get to this sooner than the others just because I think I can smash through it. Um, and I'm just really intrigued to see what happens. And then next is Transcendent Kingdom by Yeah Jassy. And this is a book about, again, family. Um, we have a, our main character whose parents, I think it was from Ghana to the, yeah, from they had to travel from Ghana to Alabama and she keeps asking the story to be told to them. However, her brother and her father kind of slip away, disappear, die, I'm not fully sure, but basically the family just ends up being her and her mother and she has to learn to live with that and live with their joint trauma, um, both from the past in that they had to you know go to the deep south um but also in the future and the present day as well um very similar to a lot of the other books on this list there's a lot of focus in this book about relationships and family um and again it's a mother-daughter relationship as well as kind of exploration of kind of their father and their brother too i'm also interested to read it because you know there's that kind of deep south mentality there's a lot of racism in there um, and to see how they overcome it and what, what this book actually talks about. And similar to the last book, this is a really thin hardback, it's about 200 pages so I could probably get through this quite quickly. Um, so I'm really interested to get stuck into it and I'm going to put it down before I start filming the video. Um, the final book from that parcel is The Golden Wall by Amanda Craig. This. I don't know why the book just reminds me of the front of um, the Boy in Striped Pajamas. Well, I do know why. Uh, but this is nothing like that. Um, so this book is about two women who meet on a train. One of them is very poor and her husband has left her. She's become a cleaner to try and pay the bills in London. And then the other one is a lot richer but kind of hates her husband as well. And they agree that both of them are going to kill their husbands. Um, for each other because there's no connection between them but when Hannah our main character gets to the house to kill the husband um, she finds out that maybe the woman she's met on the train is very different to what she's like in kind of her normal everyday life especially with her husband. I'm assuming there's kind of going to be back and forth on who's the actual bad guy in this book um, but it's a lot more like a thriller than a lot of the other books on this list which does put me a little bit more in my comfort zone as I'm much more intrigued by like a murder, possible murder mystery than I am by um, a lot of the relationship things. Um, although this book does, it's very similar to the others, sound like it's going to explore relationships between husbands, strangers um, and friends of these people that the story revolves around. But yeah, I'm excited to read this one as well. Um, my pile is getting quite big, so let's just... <laughs> Next, I've technically already opened this book because I wanted to check that the books had all arrived. Um, but I'm going to start. Uh, but we'll start with Dawn French's book, Because of You. I don't know what this book is about at all, but it's by Dawn French, who I know um, and you know everyone in the UK knows. So I'm really interested to read what's going to happen. So this story is about two women who give birth in the same hospital at the same time to very similar looking kids and one of them leaves with a very beautiful baby girl the other one leaves empty-handed um i'm not fully sure on whether this is from kind of a you know problem with uh, one of the kids dying or whether it's um they took the wrong kid or something like that um we'll find out what happens in the book i guess I'm assuming it follows the two women as they kind of get over the grief of one of them's grief of losing a child and also um, possibly finding a new one. And also the blurb is just really well written. I genuinely, like this is, so, this I genuinely want to start reading this right now to find out exactly what happened to the kid and like what the plot's going to be. 
which I guess a lot of gloves normally give this away, but this one hasn't. Um, so that's probably going top of the pile for when I do start reading these. The next book is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. I don't know much about this book, but I do know it's about a story of someone who um, transitioned, had a very good life, but was really only missing out on having a child. They then detransitioned and they've been put in a situation where they're having a very unconventional family life. Um, there's a pregnant woman in it and there's also someone else involved. Um, we kind of see um, how they come together to become a family with a child. Um, that's all I really know about the book. I'm interested to read how it's written just because of the, I guess, negative topic of detransitions. But yeah, this isn't one that I'm kind of, you know, going to jump on straight away, I think. Uh, but I'm interested to read it and kind of judge it against the other ones who are very focused on relationships and how focused on the actual characters this book is uh, compared to them as well. Uh, the next book is How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. And even after reading the blurb, there's really not a lot I can tell you about this book without possibly spoiling anything. It's about two women, one of them has kind of grown up with a kind of moral of the story kind of tale. The other one is about kind of survival, her husband's been murdered, she has to kind of get through the grief of that. And she never got the chance to really tell him how much she loved him. Um, and Lala has a very different tale, but she's still lost, she's lost a child and she married the wrong man. And I believe they probably come together and the kind of overall story that Lala's grandmother in the blurb has told her kind of helps them both um, but yeah there's not a lot to go off from the blurb um, I don't know what's going to happen in this book uh, but I from the rest of the books on this list as well I would say it's probably about kind of the relationship between the two of them as well as possibly the other people in their lives. Uh, the next book is Summer uh, by Ali Smith this is another book all about family and I actually <laughs> sounds really stupid I really like the way it's been covered um, to show off both the hardback and the cover as well um, and I know that's completely off topic to the actual book itself but it just interests me and uh, but yeah this is a book about family there's mother father brother and sister and it's set in summer and kind of there's a lot of changes that are happening within that month or season even and that's about it that's all i really know unless there's more on the back no <laughs> there's not more on the back what i do know is that ali smith has wrote three other books called autumn winter and spring and that's, that's the last one and she focuses very heavily on these kind of family dynamic books um so i'm really interested to read what she has for this one um and then the i believe this is the last one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen yeah so and then this is the last one from the long list of women's prize and it's exciting times by um naiz dolan um, so this book is about a young girl who's gone on not a gap year but she's gone out to Hong Kong for kind of a low paying job for experience and she meets Julian who lets her live in his place kind of rent free and then she also meets Edith who is the person she can talk to and who listens to her and it kind of explores the different relationships they have she has with both of them as well as you know growing up and coming of age in this non gap year time of her life i don't know if i would have picked this up if it wasn't on this list uh, and it's very focused on relationships and the sun's just gone in if the lighting has just gone askew uh, but i'm really interested to read this um, and find out what's happening um, and again like see what it's like compared to the rest of them and talking about relationships and different things like that and i believe that might be the one that makes this pile fall no? Okay. And then last but not least, and not on the long list prize, I also picked up The Defining Decade by Meg J. This is all about kind of what you should be doing in your 20s and how to make them matter. It is a bit of a self-help book, but I've been seeing this around a lot and it's been kind of said that it's really good. Um, there's a TED talk on it. Um, 
I'm midway through my 20s now, so I thought I might as well pick it up, see if it helps me, see if it helps me work on my life, and kind of sort my shit out. Um, but yeah, that's all I really picked it up for, um, but I bought it with the recipes, which is why it's in the box with them. And so yeah, that's my pile of hauled books this month. I should not be buying any more for the foreseeable future, especially since I don't even have bookshelves um, in my uh, room so far. Um, hopefully some of you have maybe read some of them. If you want to let me know what you thought of them, please do let me know in the comments below. But don't spoil any of them as I do want to be surprised. And um, yes, yeah, if there's any of you which you think, you know, I should definitely get to sooner rather than later, let me know and I will update you what I think of all of them too. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next week.